Hey, everybody. Thank you for coming. We, we've spoken, a lot of you before, a lot of you have come for seminars. We have these bio seminars throughout the year, um, always at slightly different times, different topics. Part of our value, we hope, is that we can learn what's going on on our campus, learn about all the great research that's happening here. Today is uh, no exception to that. So I want to in introduce Osama to you. Osama is a graduate student working toward his PhD in statistics and data science here on campus. He has a great, interesting background doing all kinds of interesting work in different fields. Um, and part of what we try to do in BIOS is, again, is to learn about people on our campus who have different specializations, different skill sets, different interests. And through our work in BIOS, we, we came to meet Osama. We we're really glad to do it. And we started learning about what he does with data science and with, uh, I'm going to box some of the language, Osama, but with doing machine learning in different ways and how we can use some of the new tools, artificial intelligence, AI, to learn things we never could have before. And so it's been a really fascinating um, uh, number. How many, how many months have you been with us, Osama? It's been six months now. Six months of, of work. And so we're just kind of at the tip of the iceberg, learning new things with, with him. But today, today's topic talks a bit about one of our interest areas in BIOS, which is kind of like the pipeline of sports. Um, just the pipeline in terms of where are athletes coming from in different sports, where geographically, where are they coming from? What types of schools are they coming from? What are their backgrounds of the, of the individuals, but also of the settings where they're coming from? And ultimately down the line to know a lot about how are they doing when they come? How can we identify them proactively in different ways um, for the benefit of our, our teams, but also for the benefit of creating bigger access to students from all different places to, to sport. So um, some of what I'll share today is from a, a, a big database that we have, which is every, I'll, I'll, I'll just say a couple things and let you take over, Osama. Every Big Ten athlete in about five sports for the last 13 years. Is that right? That's right. Every, so everyone who's played a Big Ten sport since 2010, in these five sports, we have entered into this, into this database, where they're coming from, and a bunch of information about them. And now, why do we want to learn that? There's a lot of reasons we want to learn that. Some of it is for to learn more about, we have some recruiting people here. How can we think, know more things more deeply in that area? Some of it also is once, I, I get involved a lot with our kind of Big Ten conversations about realignment and adding new teams to the fold and all that kind of stuff. So I was in the middle of thinking a lot of that through about six months ago, right? When we were, we were working with our Big Ten group we were adding these new teams, adding USC and UCLA, adding Washington, Oregon. And we we're thinking about that on all kinds of levels. Obviously, there's like the revenue level. We bring in a new revenue to our conference. There's the there's like the strength of team level, meaning we're bringing some great new teams. But then we started thinking about the personal level of like, what does that mean for those, those young people on those teams? Where are they coming from and how will that impact their lives? And so all of what we found here will inform some of that about when we bring in UCLA, USC, Washington, Oregon, who are those young people and how are they the same? How are they different from the ones who are here now? How might that inform the work we're doing in the future? So I just want to thank you, Osama, for your work. A lot of today can be interactive. So if you see things he's showing, he can probe and ask, look for answers to your questions while we're doing it. So if you have questions that come up, please um, know this is an interactive session. So Osama, I'll pass it to you. And uh, thanks a lot. Thank you so much, people, for the for introduction. And thank you all for coming today. Um, my name is Osama Kshepati. I'm a BIOS graduate assistant. And today we will be looking at something very interesting, actually, the, using data science to understand college sports trends. And like you said, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more applications, a lot more research to be done, and a lot of uh, different utilization of the tools we'll be showing. And most important things are discussion. So if any of you have any comments or things you want to look at in particular, we can do that. It's an interactive tool that we'll be showing. So with any further ado, let's get started. So in brief, what today we'll be going over, this one hour scenario will be mostly interacting with the uh, analysis dashboard that we created. We'll be showing you a lot of the trends we found, or we'll be having your input with anything in particular you want to look at. And of course, discussing the point of data science in sports, it's, it's a new field and there's a lot of opportunities in it. A lot of applications, a lot of things to explore. And this is one of the things that we want to look at, which is the pipelines of sport, uh, college athletes. Where are they coming from? 
the objective is first to unveil the dashboard that we created. We'll show you this tool and eventually you have it uploaded to our website so all of you can access it and interact with it. We'll showcase the trends that we found and some of the parameters we looked at, such as economic, demographic, and geographic distribution of student athletes. And we explore some of the machine, model, machine learning models we created to forecast how these trends will be changing over time for the next 15 years. And finally, open for questions eventually after, after the discussion will be happening as well. Any of you have any additional inputs on this or anything you want to see. Of course, you have to get reference to the data that we use. We use some data from player resources from the individual university's website. We use the ES census data for socioeconomic data. We have uh, some APIs for Google Maps and, and open, different kind of mapping systems so we can create the maps we'll be looking at. And now uh, we'll get started with the tool. Um, can this be shown in the Zoom? Yep, they see it. Awesome. So let's get started. Um, this is shown in the Zoom, right? Uh, yes. And now she's showing the Zoom. So to get started, we were looking at right here a map of every single athletes from all those schools for all these years and where they come from, all their hometowns uh, across the US. And right now, I highlighted all the schools, so we'll see the distribution of hotspots. So we'll see a color coded map showing where athletes are mostly coming from. It's changing. There you go. So the color red represents the areas where we have most athletes coming from, and of course, then followed by yellow and green. And we can do filtering for any of the years, any of the sports, and any of the hometown, hometown states. And of course, individual, uh, every individual state as well, uh, university as well. If you so, look at one, go ahead. Oh, you want to ask? Well, I was going to ask you maybe getting to. So, if we want to look at University of Wisconsin student athletes for the last thirteen years, where are they coming from? Well, it's like only Wisconsin. I put it right here. Um, like, um, uh, yeah. It takes a couple of seconds to update. Well, um, we'll zoom in a little bit. So you can see where the University of Wisconsin most athletes come from this particular region, which is Wisconsin, Minnesota, and um, North Illinois. Are you able to break this down sport by sport as well? Yeah, we can look at let's look at football. We look at only football. One thing I have, we have found working with Osama in the last few weeks on this is we it gets so much here that we like we got, we almost could have spent an hour on every one of these topics. So it's interesting as we start digging into the point, you'll, all that you'll see. Yeah, and this is all we're looking at. Just a visual representation of all that we're looking at. Just as a start, um, just to get us an idea of where the data is, um, we're looking at it coming from. And we can of course click the filter of each interview, so we see this for it and so on. But we'll move on to the next. Uh, I say like break down the data. Right here, looking at the data that we have, where is it coming from? So every university, every sport, in every university, we see the count of students that we have the data for in this uh, this study. We also see the major students, the sports they play, and you can see, of course, mostly are football players because, well, generally speaking, the rosters for football players are much larger than all the other sports. And um, we can look at these parameters also filtered by the things we have seen on screen. For example, I can look at only like, let's say only football majors. See mostly like communication or family, um, family science, sociology, and so on. You can go there. And this again, just to give us an idea of what the others we have looking at, uh, we can be investigating is composed of. Again, we can and he can look into any subset of that. So if he's if you want to see what, you know, I'm not asking you to do this now, but if if you what what did um what were the academic majors of UCLA volleyball players for the last 13 years? He can show you if you want to see what did any sport, any major, yeah, all of that. So it can, it can, all that can be broken down. And then moving next to the next visual we have is basically a heat map showing you the states and the sports. 
which shows us which states produce the most athletes in each particular sport. And this is color coded by percentile. So like the color red shows the highest percentile, and the yellow is the 80th percentile, the green is the 60th, and so on. And we can filter that by sport. I want to look at only, let's say, volleyball, or maybe only like track and field. Now I see which state I'm using the highest number of track and field athletes. So in this case, we have like California at the highest, and so does Michigan. Um, New Jersey is kind of high as far as so and so on. That's based on count. Again, this is not based on like uh, percentage. So it could be biased because of the population count of these states. Next thing we'll look at is the high school. Well, let's do a quiz here before you show it. Can you go back? Yeah. If any um anyone in this room have a guess of a what high school or name a high school that's in the top five in the U.S. that's produced the most Big Ten athletes the last five years? Yep. What is it? Um, any any, any guesses? Saint Joseph Prime. Where is that? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, okay. Okay. Cleveland Saint Anne's. Uh, Cleveland Saint Anne's. Edwards. Edwards. Okay. Edwards. I, I nailed this one when we quizzed that, the I, first I, I, huh? IMG mean? was one. The other one okay. that I guessed was modern day. Okay. Once we added UCLA, USC. Most. Any other guesses? Now keep in mind our geographic footprint of our big where we are now. Yeah. I think Chicago, so no. also Indiana in Indiana. Stronger, we'll, we'll see. All right. Huh? No, not long. Well, let's see. Let's see the answer. Yeah, actually, uh, I'm gonna go back to your guess because we saw something interesting about your guess. So I'll show you right now. Okay. Carmel High School. If any native Hoosiers in here would know of Carmel High School, it's a powerhouse. Did we go to Carmel? No, we got good kids. Okay. <laughs> Carmel, come back. Carmel is a big sport powerhouse in Indiana. It's known for Indianapolis. Yeah. So this, tell us what we see here, Osama. Um, so what we're looking at here is a bar chart showing you the each high school, the top high schools. We have, for example, number one here is is Manatee, not Manatee, followed by Carmel, followed by uh, what do we have Loyola High School, Centennial, and so on. The numbers you see are the count of students athletes we had from these schools in the last thirteen years, and then the boxes show you the the count of students are coming from out of state to these schools, right? Each school represents the state. So you see some schools actually have students coming from all over the country to these high schools. And they end up playing in the Big Ten Conference. One of the, one good example is IMG Academy. I have some issues today, but I'm not showing that. But IMG Academy is this one. Yeah, this is IMG Academy right here. It has students coming from all over the country to this school, and they end up playing in the Big Ten Conference. Uh, uh, Osama, could you show us uh, the break, the top football schools, high schools? I can select one football, and that will filter it down to only football um, students. You see, number one is St. John, St. John, Osco. Yeah. Uh, and this has changed a lot with, if you look at uh, those top two schools in particular, those are big feeders. Those are huge feeders of UCLA and USC, those top two schools, because of where they are They're in Southern California. Does it say where that Central Catholic is from? Sorry? Uh, this Central Catholic that is? Which one is it? Uh, there's a little, there's a little noise in that one, because some of them, yeah. some of the Central Catholic and the oranges in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Because in uh, this one is Pennsylvania, this one is Oregon, this one is Ohio, and so on. I have a more in depth uh, visual of this. Screen. I'll go on to the next one. It's still in high schools, but it gives a little more in depth analysis. It shows the exact numbers of the students and it shows the trends and the forecast over years, right? So I have this trend for all the schools, and I could set only, let's say, on the St. John. It has a total of 134 students in the last 13 years that came from this high school. And I can see the trend of how that's changing over time. So I have the data for the year 2023. And then we do a forecasting model, a machine learning model that forecasts how this trend's going upwards after that. Of course, the trend, the model is like based on only the 13 data, uh, 13, 13 years data. That's not sufficient enough to make very a high confidence, um, like exact predictions. But what we can see from here is the trends. And the trend in this seems to be going up. So that means the school is increasing in time. How many students are coming to that particular school is becoming, let's say, focusing more on college sports in general. Or like we can see certain trends specific to why this is what's happening. And the, um, the different way, like we can look at, let's say, Monday and now, you know, and Do these stats show what the total student body count is as well? Total students' body count to high schools? Yeah. 
We don't have that now. That we actually have something very interesting we can include. We have that in the school data. Yeah, we have in the school data. <laughs> yeah, just to ask out of curiosity, because if the if the student count is you know significantly lower and it's all athletes, then it's an entire culture flip, right? Inside yeah. the middle school. That makes right. sense out there. Yeah. We have the data from the NFHS. Yep. Well, to what extent and I apologize if I missed this, uh 240 students over a period of time. Yeah. Those are students that with that, that size of national level. Uh, they played in Big Ten Conference. All these schools. Yeah, yes, in the last 15 years. Specifically yeah. in football. Okay. This one. This one specific. Uh, this is just Big Ten athletes. Yeah. These are just, all these data are just Big Ten athletes. So the question I have, and this is more of a study, uh, uh, I, how to look at data. So how do you uh, distinguish we like uh, one of these would become like a, a self fulfilling prophecy, right? So, like, Matter Day, at some point, it has enough students that play the Big Ten such that it recruits, so it's such a Big Ten places in a, uh, a, a level of attention on that school so that it uh, recruits more students. Like, so I guess the question then, maybe that just speaks to like, what's the outcome beyond? Um, back when they went to Big Ten School, right? Like, how do you see where I'm going with this? Yes, that's right. Yeah. And this is something we're looking at after the next, which is performance analysis, right? Mm -hmm. We're doing some work with the soccer team right now. We're looking to expand it with other sports teams, which was basically evaluating how these athletes are doing and, and, and performance in the field, right? And the end goal is basically establish like something that we can look at and say, like, we can compare those performances they're doing, how they're doing in, in, in the teams, and then we see how they're doing in high school. And see which ones actually turned out to be like like we have some great some measure success or something like that in the field. Yeah. So um that's actually where this research is for, like we would be going with actually. Yeah. And yeah, you know, the same thing for all the schools, the current students we can filter by each sport, by each university, by each state. And for something like Mother Day, we see here we have uncertainty because we have a lot of jumps, we have years where they recruited very small number. And we have years with different high numbers, and that will give the model uncertainty. So we can see, like, it's not really certain, it's just not right. It's usually a steady trend because, well, there's a lot of uncertainty in the data. And we could dig deeper into why this would be happening, why this year, for example, the UPAC has seen that a much lower number than all the years. And there could be many reasons for it, but we did not yet get to dig deep that much into the data again. <clears throat> And then other analysis we did, this is something like a little bit aside, but not completely related to this project, which is basically, well, the weights and heights of athletes uh, by position, by sport, by university, and so on. And I want to look at the weight one first. Um, we can see here for the weights of athletes, um, of course, in, in the rosters and the university websites, they only uh, record uh, men's athletes' um, weights. So we look at the men, um, all the Big Ten conference, uh, Big Ten universities, and all these five sports. And we can see that football offensive linemen have their own distribution here. This purple color is a purple um, pencil minus, and they have their own, like, I would say, like great distribution above everything else, all the other athletes. And we can prove that also by position if you look at the moment. You can see the average are in the, in the, in the like, what's that? In a few hundreds range as opposed to everything else being like the lower 200s and that can be done for any position in any sport or in any uh, university and so on if you look at let's say only on uh, basketball players um, heights of course they'll be as we but they'll be certainly higher than like all well, the average overall for all the sports and as you look at some kind of soccer for example um, it's not necessarily on um, uh, height by like sports so we would see a much lower Number for that. Some of the some of what we found was especially interesting as we got to this and, and is uh, as you start looking at like attributes of successful player profiles over the years and see whether there are trends with team success, player success, and like physical profiles as well as the other stuff we're looking at. So there's a lot to dig into here. Well, yeah, let you keep on going. We'll keep going to the next one. Um... So this is where it starts getting um, more interesting. Basically, what we're looking at here is, is those plots each represent a year for each sport. And we're looking at the average income, the average median income of the households of the hometown where the athletes are coming from. And we can see a much lower oh, 
I'm not lying, they're average for soccer as opposed to all the other sports. This line here represents the average on meat income for all the households of all the students, athletes in Big Ten Conference. And the yellow boxes represent soccer only for all the years from 2010 to 2013. And these here you can see the color code for each. So we have that blue is for volleyball, the green is for track, and uh, the red is football, and the blue is a basketball game. We will look at this much more in depth, but this is what we see from this is that over all the years we see soccer consistently being above the average. And we'll dig deeper as why this is happening or how we can see this trend more clearly. First, what we look at here is basically the variance in geographic distribution of student athletes. So what we see in this plot over here on the top one is start with it is that for each sport, we plotted over the last 15 years the variance in the XY coordinates. What that variance tells me is that I have higher variance in the XY coordinates. That means uh, players that come from a more scattered geographic distribution have a decreasing or lower variance. That means well, we're centering more on certain locations where we get the athletes from or where they come from. If I look at football more. I thought that's only over. I can see that over the years consistently we're covering that larger geographic area of where the athletes are coming from, right? And of course, because we have a larger number of data, we can see that the forecasting model here we predict that this is only going to be uh, increasing over time because well, we have large enough data points for football players, so we have higher uncertainty in it. And consistently over the years from 2010 to 2023, we can see that mostly it's going up continuously, right? So we're covering a larger, larger um, geographic area. Part of this as well, we, we discussed that that Osama will be able to look at the clusters that are in, like the the geographic clusters where players are increasingly coming from. Like where are the trends of where they are coming from? And we can dig in and learn more about each of those geographic clusters and to learn what's the story that's happening there. So whether we're looking for new people or we wanna know about the people that we already have, we can know increasingly where they're coming from in deeper ways. Well, and for the plot, we all just explain something is that the green line represents the actual data we have, the green line presents the filled model, and then the dashed line uh, shows the uh, forecast for the next 50 years until 2040. And then this blue red line represents how sure I am. If it's closer to the prediction, which means I'm more certain because I have larger data points that are showing a clear trend. If it's larger, like OC, I have for other sports, that means we don't have that much certainty in the model that we put. An example for that would be this. Um, I think it was believe volleyball. Or, um, Yeah, volleyball, you can see already, like, just from the variance plot, without the forecast, we can see a lot of, like, I would say, like, fluctuating trends in terms of variance, how it's changing over the years. So I'm, I'm almost certain this will be a very large window because we'll have a very, like, I would say, like, like, high fluctuations in the variance plot. So it only makes sense that I'll have low certainty in the forecast we're doing. But in general, like, you can see, like, almost, like, majority of the area showing that we're going to be increasing in, the, in that trend. So it's only going to increase in, in variance, most likely, but still not very soon. And then we did the same thing about by university. So what we were looking at right now before was by school, or uh, by sport, and now we look at it by university. If I look at like let's say only Wisconsin, uh, the Wisconsin uh, athletes and how the trends change over years. Again, we have a lot of fluctuations, so the trends not gonna give me a very high you know, prediction. But we can see in general that uh, over the years we did not have at least a decline in the variance. So at least we haven't the main very that we can conclude from this is that we have consistent variance. So that means. We come in the same area over time of where the athletes come across the university, university of Wisconsin with all the sports. But we look at football individually, we saw that the trend was going up. The next uh, factor we looked at was the income of uh, the household, the average household income for the hometowns of certain athletes, and also how that changed over time. And this we looked at it by university. And we saw that with university, we look at university uh, as a whole, we saw a lot of uncertainty in the trends. So we wanted to dig deeper into it and look at it by sport. Can we look at real quick at that at that chart though, Osama? Which one? So the one on the the one on the right there on the right yeah. that we're seeing, this is the, the for the student athletes who go to Northwestern University, for example, they're coming from communities with the highest love, highest median level of income. Yes. And Rutgers would be student athletes are coming from median incomes with the lowest, and then everywhere in between across yeah. all the sports. And this is, yeah, and uh, this is across all the sports, like you said. And then uh, what we were looking at next was for each of those okay. sports. Well, we see a very significant difference between both. Um, 
So like, when we see in like the lines, maybe I think a lot from the average, that means well, we have something to investigate for within the various and various various from the line. And here we do the same thing by spoilers. And then again, we see some um, various by sports. We can see like um, soccer players in general, or women's soccer players in general, come from the wealthiest um, communities as opposed to something like uh, women basketball. And, uh, and here it ranks the most. Part of what we had discussed previously is that, you know, in all these conversations about, um, there, there, there's a lot of layers to all of this, but in some of it, things like there's been discussions for years about like, name, image, and likeness and paying athletes and all that. And there are many layers to that conversation, but one is kind of like where the students are coming from. It's not that that should shape the answers to it, but it is a factor that if you see um, there are very different levels of need that tend to accompany students from different sports. And then we combined both together and we looked at uh, each sports slash university ranking. Um, and we can see, well, the highest are, uh, of course, being uh, UCLA and Northwestern uh, women's soccer, and then the lowest being um, Michigan, Northern, and so on, women's basketball, all right at the lowest. And there's a very high difference if we're looking at the average numbers. Over here, we're looking at um, the highest being on. Um, um, an average that's about twice as much as the lowest, and this is a very high variance. Could we look at the Wisconsin sports on this? Is that possible? Yeah. And anyone, please feel free to chime in with questions. I'm asking all the questions. The data and these are the communities these are the communities from which Wisconsin student athletes have come from the last 13 years you see the highest being women's soccer or men's soccer or by volleyball and then uh, men's, men's football what's interesting is different from the overall average but Again, like the number is not that much difference as of like the, the, the difference is not that significant as compared to the other difference that we saw with all the universities. And then what we see here is for each of the universities, for each of the sports, we can look at the forecast in two things how the income itself is changing and then how the variance in the income is changing. How the income is changing is saying basically are, are the students coming from wealthier or less wealthy um, communities in general, and how the variance is that is that how how diverse I'm going with in terms of like the students um was it communities income or wealth levels, so um, both plots like again same thing with all the things we looked at is that we cannot really say that by the year 2040 we'll reach in that particular number but we just see the trends and because the model does not have that high level like I say um, accuracy or certainty yet we can only see the trends but it's not really particular values. If I look at something like, um, let's say, um, I don't know, this is Iowa soccer, I think, I think. We can see the plots being filtered and the model is created only for that particular school or for that particular sport. Mm -hmm. and, and, and of course, there's a different combination of the plots, how they would turn out. Both are increasing, that means, well, students are generally coming from wealthier backgrounds, but also the variance in, on their plots, uh, like, uh, directly and then the backgrounds is increasing over time. And we had a lot of data from the census that we wanted to investigate. So one of the things we looked at also was uh, the age distribution of those hometowns, and how's that if that, if that has any like effect on, on the students' um, backgrounds. And we see there isn't that much significant difference when we look at the universities. The average age is like almost similar for those hometowns of the athletes with all the universities, and almost similar thing by for if you look at the both combined together, we can see um, certain interesting trends. We can see that um, there are some schools that have much higher numbers or average age in their hometowns as compared to others, like Rogers, like in example, we have Rogers in soccer. And the um, same thing we see with like Michigan women's soccer and so on. And of course, each of those findings, like there could be a million reasons for it. Each one of them could be a study done on it and why we see this trend over these numbers. 
Because we have very large data samples, so those trends definitely do mean something, but it's not something that we covered yet in this project because, again, this is on research area. Next, we look at the minority breakdown of the hometown athletes. So, the number that we look at here is the percent of minor, uh, percent of minority uh, composition of demographic and then the hometowns. So, for example, um, we start by looking at my university. So, for example, Marian um, athlete, uh, Marian athletes in the last thirteen years come from forty-two percent of uh, hometowns with forty-two percent, um, sorry, yeah, forty-two percent uh, minority in the hometowns. And of course, something like Iowa come from communities that are only 90% of uh, minorities. And of course, the difference here is very significant. But like we can, like definitely, there's something to investigate here because, well, the variance from the average is very significant. We can look at the same thing by sports. And uh, again, we see basketball, football, and on numbers, and then all the other sports on that, like those are numbers each other. And the same thing as we did before, we looked at both combined and we saw something like, like um, I think this was, yeah, Maryland football players come from 49% of uh, minority communities. And we have something like, I think this one's the lowest here is, is well, Michigan women's soccer come from the lowest. Um, all the a lot of this and stuff also players. relates to uh, some of our conversations we've had in our lab about access to sport and who's getting it and who's not. And then you can look at a lot of these communities and you can see who is represented and who's not in very stark ways, um, both in who shows up at universities, but um, again, with learning about the pipelines of where what communities are, are healthy producers of student assets. And great difference by sport. By sport and by number yeah. as well? Yes. Yeah. And then we look at one more factor, which is the household size of the communities, the average household size in the community of student athletes. And again, there isn't any significant differences here because you know, the all within the two to three range. But when you broke it, when you broke it down by um, university and sport, you notice that the California schools in general, the student athletes come from households that have much larger, well, not much larger, but relatively larger um, household count as opposed to something like Wisconsin. So most of those concepts, of course, came here at the bottom as and most of the companies will be a C and UCLA in the top. And again, this that's like any other the findings, there could be a million reasons for it to be a study on why this is happening. Um, let's be honest with this. And the last factor we looked at was the education levels. And what we're looking at here, this number of this percentage is is the average um percent of the population of the hometowns that have bachelor degrees or higher. So we, we ranked it by lowest to highest, and we saw that by sport, football um, the players come from hometowns. So only 37% of people come from uh, have bachelor degree or higher. And the highest was soccer that come from 48%, which is a significantly higher number. And we looked at the same thing by university. We saw that ledgers come at 35%. And the highest was, I believe it was Northwestern. Yeah, Northwestern at almost 50%. <laughs> We broke it down by sport and uh, and university, and we saw that the lowest was it was in yeah, Indiana uh, women's basketball, and we see women, many women's basketball came at the lowest, and soccer um, and then I was like and volleyball came as the highest. And a lot of these factors could be like have an effect on one another, right? Like income is weighted to the education level, like the all those. Uh, but we broke it down individually. See any particular trends that were particular is that this factor, and. Um, that's it for the desktop. So if anyone wants to see any particular like trend or something you want to look at, this would be good. I guess the one question I have is of all the data you showed us today, what data are you still looking to add to the dashboard? Is there a plan? Is there something you're like we really think this would be really use useful to us? Is there anything yet? Yeah. Um so the the whole so right now what we're doing is all exploration, right? We're exploring trends. I want to do more of like I was talking about this is evaluation. We worked with a soccer team and someone doing like end game performance analysis, right? And we still see particular players how they do in the game or something like that. Mm -hmm. If we link those two together and we link it then with high school games performance because there are data for that available online. We link all this together, we can establish something like a recruiting pipeline or like scouting pipeline of how we can find the athletes and what what like circumvent um like let's say like socioeconomic or demographic variables that give them an edge and then become more successful athletes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Is there a way, like, so you were able to pin a specific high school? Is there a way to dive deeper in? So you had 150 kids from that high school. Are you able to find out and get those names? Yeah. Of that specific oh, with the passwords. We have the names. Um, yeah. I, I'm looking for like the names about the privacy, like, or what like actually the school they ended up going to, because I think pipelines are a huge and yeah. specifically like recruiting going, you know, some of those schools and knowing what schools really these are all there. public data that yeah. were taken off of their public websites. Yeah, I so that's really and this was all a piece of vision, like to move from this to like establishing the pipeline of what, how we find some of the athletes like yeah. well, better they get more successful. Yeah, no, that's awesome. They they the, what Osama was talking about as well is a possibility of then being able to link kind of the the uh, performance profiles of student athletes coming from different spaces. So look at those student athletes who all came from modern day. Well, how did they do in college? Exactly. Whether they were all yeah. American, all conference, yeah. how many times starters, I think is mm -hmm. that I already well, already he could look at what where they all went, not just that they went, but where they all went and with little effort kind of how they did, but there's deeper levels of it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> why do you have like performance analysis for the soccer team? Because we worked on them in and creating some sort of like game performance uh, reports and like that. So when we work on that similar similar reports and analysis for the other sports team, we will have that data all integrated and we'll link it to this. And only then we'll be able to go after what we're talking about is uh, finding the pipeline. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Our coaches are on the road recruiting and yeah. like they might not have a kid these next two years, but no one traditionally, you know, has making sure we're not missing. Yeah. You, you talk about the you three different assignments, you talk about Marrying the um, so let's just build off of that. Marrying the uh, ratings of those kids uh, as they're being recruited by whatever measure of stars or whatever. So, and then so you, you know the name of the kid is real now, you know where the kid's been. If you could marry that with what just try to find some baseline. What the kid was, uh, how the kid was ranked as he came out of high school as a recruit, and then reconcile that with what the kid actually did by way of performance assessment. Um, this is the goal, right? Because we, have, we, they are, we already have data for their performance in college, and then there's some data available online for the high school uh, games and then the rating in those in those public games. Right. We link, we see a trend in, in both. We try to like establish like sort of correlation with how you did in high school and how you yeah. did in high yeah. yeah, yeah. You can see that would be informative, right? Mm -hmm. You can see, oh yeah, a lot of kids that come out of high school XYZ is a high profile high school. We got great career rankings. Mm -hmm. And now if they go to a school, but then they don't come out. Mm -hmm. yeah, versus the inverse of that. Yeah. Like, you know, like, that would really be helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really, kind of, I guess, the question I asked before like, how much does well known high school influence how those where those kids transition to. Is it like, is it, like sense, a, for example, take a, that, 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 take a flyer on a kid that's yeah. well, like he goes to oh, play in high school. Yeah, like at modern day they had yeah. the same coach for many, many, many yeah. years until this year. And he was he was a major factor at play there. Um but now he's gone. So our future trends may be deeply affected by that. Yeah. The other really interesting thing that we've had conversations about is looking at more subjective, like personality data. So being able to profile a, a player in different ways by looking at things like social media and how they are presented and how they are presenting themselves. So like we we were, I think we were joking the other day about, about how we like wrestlers or tough guys, you guys like wrestlers. <laughs> you want to find like the guys who are on this profile somehow, who somehow are associated with wrestling, are there ways of doing that by looking at them, not just at their like school profile, their demographic profile, but at social media about how they're portrayed in that way, Mar marry all this stuff together. So there may be ways of looking at more like personality stuff yeah. with other attributes that like a program wants, if a program desires um, certain mentalities that there may be a way to find right. some of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, Osama, do you happen to have um just I don't know we're getting closer to time, but do you do you happen to have without major headache any of those soccer profiles yeah. on the board? So one thing this is a little experiment like a low 
experiment we did, uh, a couple of the soccer coaches were interested initially in just looking at game performance stuff. And now Samo was able to pull up some reports for them in which he could look at the opponents that they're playing using existing software and, and model every single touch that every single player has had the entire season and map it out in visual ways for the soccer coaches. So they'll know like Gerardo's playing center back, every single touch he's had, what has happened with the ball and what are the predictions of where he will go with the ball when he gets it and how successful have each of those passes been. He's more successful going to the left than he is to the right of completing his passes. He's So he's been providing a report each game to the soccer coaches on that granular of data because of the model he built. So there are ways of thinking about that kind of thing across different ways. Okay, this is, this is not, we're not football coaches or anything like that, Arno, but just knowing yard lines and where teams are on at and certain points of the game, knowing yeah. whether run pass or things like that. That's, that's the idea. The existing is that for every sport now, even the college level, even high school level, yeah. uh, there are many companies that are placing cameras and they're recording all the data and then putting it out for sale. Like soccer players, they put the uh, soccer team, they purchased the API and then we took the data that they got and we make these reports every time before every game they have for every team they're going to get. So we give full analysis on that team. The last, like, they can be like somebody else, like, like, well, look at their last 10 games. How did they do? So we look at things like, well, this is some numbers for the players. Um, how many minutes played and the subs and the number of passes and so on. But more importantly, we look at visuals that would help them like look at certain messages of players. For example, we look at the formation they played and how does it change over during the game, right? When soccer had different like layout for the players and then the field, how they place themselves or position themselves. You can see that like, they played, for example, this team played 58 percent of the time they played at this formation, 3.3. And this is the expected number of calls they were this is the actual number of calls they got. And the expected number of goals. Because they, you know, in soccer, goals are very unpredictable, right? So we give them something that's more statistically solid, which is something called XG or expected goals. And that tells us like which formation are they forming best in attacking, which formation they're um receiving the most goals, right? And for each formation, we look at deeper at some things like for each of the players they have in the position team. Yes. This is all the defensive roles that opposite team had. How many times, which areas did they lose the ball most at? Which areas just ball loss, lost the result in goals against them? Um, the weakest and best defenders, which are the weakest points that they can well personally like target during the game, right? Because they have high percent of, of like ball losses that result in goals. We look at their passes, where they repeat really pass. So if we see something like this player here. And more short passes, and they can pressure this person because as well. They fail on those passes. They have high pressure on them, they can win the ball. And so on. And yeah, this is this. Um, I do with the soccer team. Similar things that, of course, I've already been established for all the other sports as well. And this is what we're talking about is that linking this, the performance of the players, win the game with what we did before, we can sort of like navigate to how we go about the different. Yeah, that's that's the bigger point is that all, all of these things kind of go together in yeah. that it's not just like knowing who is out there, but it's kind of knowing the, the whole pipeline of where they're coming from, where they're going, and how they're performing. And that's just, this is a little snapshot of kind of some ways Osama's been tinkering through that. So it's exciting. This, this is more than anything a, a glimpse into the future of where a lot of kind of AI type stuff is leading us with learning about sport and understanding it in deeper and newer ways. Uh, I see that already in soccer, especially European soccer. You see some players like extremely overvalued. Why is that? Because, well, the coaches or the analysts behind it is like looking, well, this player will do amazing in this particular position. No, none of the other teams see it because we have our own analysis that we've done when we showed that this player would be great for here. And so they, they target players that everyone thinks is random, but nothing's random anymore because, well, they spend a lot of money on it. Um, and professional, um, in professional like sports, this became like much more twisty and we're still like just getting started, but there's a lot more to it. Any other questions? Anyone? I know you've, you've done this for the Big Ten, all this data gathering, right? Yeah. Is it possible to, um, being in football, to gather data of similar offenses, defenses of the same uh, type here that you can build a profile for a student athlete? Or is that kind of down the road further? Um, can you say that again? Like, so, uh, air raid offense. We yeah. run, we run a version of the air raid offense. Yeah. Um, if you know successful players at a different school outside of the Big Ten, yeah, and can you build a profile off of those schools that were successful in that type of offense? 
to to build a profile for for Wisconsin. Um, this is a sort of what we're doing next right now is like we're looking at other conferences. I think we're including five new conferences, right? Yep. Um, and, SEC, ACC, Big Twelve, Pac twelve as currently is, and then the Ivy League. We are looking at so we are in the process of getting all that data. Yeah, don't you do that? We add the other variables to create like let's say like success profile. Like we look at certain things depends on like of course like there's two hit factors like the practicality of like durability of certain things like including social media like certain like aspects about that or like other information about the players that we can measure like I say like do some sort of assessment on the player uh, performance or like maybe even psychological profile. So um, initially once we get all the data I think we will be able to like at least identify how spots that we can focus on and we will do like more in-depth analysis on that. I think another great reflection to his point of how many offers kids might get at a certain school, knowing that, but second part, transfer portal. How many kids from that high school maybe leave and enter the portal? Knowing that data could be beneficial as well for whatever reason. That's very interesting. Should you stay paying the hour? They're not paying an hour. Yeah, so they're home home there. Home there. yeah, like California school, Big Ten for the Long, long distance from uh, where you originate. Yeah, and then so you travel back home. It's very interesting to look at uh, at a very low level, like that big first map that Osama had of where all Big Ten athletes are from. And then he disaggregated, just looked at the four schools that will be coming to us. And it was just like all West Coast. They're all from the West Coast, almost all those, but little spattering to other places. So there are a lot of implications for that. In terms interesting. Of where they want to be. How much they dive into the West. Yeah. And other places now that they're mm -hmm. working on. But it's been just a real uh, interesting thought experiment to, to uh, you know, learn from Osama through all of this. So, I mean, I think one of the big hopes we have coming out here is if anyone has questions about this kind of stuff, he's just such a smart guy and a, a patient person for uh, putting up with all my questions where I have no idea what I'm after, but <laughs> he has good skills for being able to kind of wade through all of my ignorance about the topic, uh, and but get to the point. So it's, it's really uh, a great thing to learn with Osama here. So, yeah, thank you all for, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.